Welcome to episode three of Guitar Talk, the series which is basically an excuse for me to play all my guitars and tell you a story about how I acquired them, why they became part of my collection, and give you a review in terms of sound, build quality, playability, that kind of thing. So today we're taking a look at my solar guitars, A1.7 TBR, so trans blood red. Blood red. Seven string. So, uh, so story about how I acquired this guitar. This guitar uh, was actually a B stock. I really wanted a seven string guitar with the Evertune bridge because I was getting into writing more and more seven string stuff at the time and recording demos at home and, and all that kind of stuff. So uh, I think as I've always said before, like Evertune has the most benefit for people recording. It just fucking saves so much time not having to check your tuning between takes the consistency across the board, you know, like especially if you're multi-tracking, you know, the, the punch and the wall of sound you get from say four multi-track guitars, all with the same perfect intonation and tuning is, is fucking just killer. Absolutely, you know, I, I, I swear by it for recording. So I didn't even know Solar sold B stocks. I can't remember how I became aware. I might've seen like one of Ola's videos where he, where he showed you where the B stock stuff is. Uh, so I found this guitar, which was advertised as saying it, it just had signs of use. So I imagine this was maybe like a trade show guitar or a demo guitar that had been sent to somebody and then, uh, you know, posted. But I don't really know, to be honest. The one thing that kind of pissed me off <laughs> was that it didn't come with a gig bag. Like this is, this is the one series solar. So like it retails at about 1100 quid to not come with a gig bag or a case of any kind is like fucking stingy. Um, any guitar over a grand should be coming with a, a minimum some type of gig bag. The strange thing is like the other funnier shaped solas that I've had from the one series range, the Vs, even my seven string Explorer came with a gig bag. So like the fact this one didn't, I, I don't know, it makes no sense to me because surely, you know, even being like a 26 and a half inch scale, you could fit this in, in any old, uh, guitar gig bag anyway so I don't really understand that so what I've done to this guitar well um, the string gauge that came with it was actually fine for my seven string tuning I use a really weird seven string tuning which is uh, drop a on the low two B's on the top and a G flat so it's almost like a, you get kind of 12 string vibes a little bit because of the two B strings Um, so the string gauge was fine, I just replaced it with a set of MYXLs. Uh, then we have pickups. So as I've said before, solar, pretty much all solars apart from a few of them, come with a, a licensed uh, Duncan designed pickup, which they call the Duncan Solar. Um, they're really not to my taste for metal. Uh, the neck that they supply is fine for cleans, I only really use the neck for cleans anyway. I'm not a lead guy, I'm a rhythm guitarist and a songwriter, so that's fine. But um, I don't know, I just prefer the, the extra boost of an active or at least a high output passive pickup. I prefer that hitting the front of the amp. You know, I fully understand people who say you can still get the same result with a medium output and a uh, overdrive pedal into the front of an amp. And my response to that is, well, why not have, fucking have all three? You know, this is metal at the end of the day. This is like a very extreme pushed high gain sound that we're going for. Um, that's just my personal preference anyway. So I binned off the Duncan Solas. Um, I was looking for something that was active, but not like irritatingly so, because I'm going to be using this for recording, so I would prefer something that isn't overly EQ'd to begin with. So for example, like an EMG81 has that real like high mid spike that is a, is a bit unpleasant at times, um, depending on how you're EQing and what your mix sounds like. You know, Fishman Fluence, modern, I have a Marmite relationship. I really like them in some guitars and then in other guitars, I find them really harsh and annoying sounding. <laughs> like the cocked wah thing, just it fucking drives me mad. Uh, so I took an absolute punt on these Seymour Duncan Retribution pickups, which are the signature pickup of Dino from Fear Factory. Uh, I could not find a single review <laughs> of these online. I could not find a single sound clip there's a, pit, there's a clip of uh, Dino playing them on his YouTube, and they, of course they sound fucking great, because Dino's playing it. <laughs> and it's like a professionally produced 
recording, so that didn't really tell me shit. But, you know, the rule I have kind of with signature gear and signature pickups at least is like, how good is that person's tone? How much do you like the way that person sounds? And if you really like that person's tone, generally, like, you won't go far wrong buying their signature pickup or, or any other of their signature kit. And so on that basis, I thought, I'll take a punt. You know, the other thing was, um, these are active pickups, but they come in a rounded passive casing, which is really cool. I've not really seen that before. So they're not the squared off soap bar that you get with most actives like Fishman's and EMG's. And I thought, great, I won't need to route my guitar. Or so I thought, we'll come to that in a minute. And so yeah, I took a complete pun, not even knowing what these really sound like. Luckily, they sound absolutely killer. And they're probably my favorite seven string pickups I've tried. They are really thick and chunky sounding, but without any kind of like extreme EQing, they're just really flat and really evenly voiced. And you don't find any like overly boosted frequencies or, or anything like that. Moving on to the installation, I was under the impression that these being passive mount, passive shape, I wouldn't need to route this guitar because Seymour Duncan advertised like these are passive mount pickups. That's total lies. Uh, I needed to route a fuckload <laughs> to get these in. Um, and uh, you know, the solar routing is fairly generous in terms of uh, the space left. Like, you know, some, uh, some guitars have had like Schecter's, they route real close. Like they don't leave a lot of leeway. So uh, I had to do a fair bit of routing to get these in with sandpaper and an engineer's file, which is like always a heart and mouth moment when you're routing your own guitar. You're like, oh fuck, what if it splits? What if I miss and do it make a massive dent? Um, and then uh, I did the passive to active conversion myself, soldered everything myself, completely fucked it up. Nothing was working. So I had to take it to my tech, Phil, and have him do a rescue job. I think basically what I'd done is completely fucked up the wiring of the selector because there was a five-way selector in here originally. And um, these pickups only really work with three-way. So he basically, he basically rescued it by redoing the wiring and putting a three-way selector in. So let's get some tones out of this monster. Ah! 
so fucking thick and like nasty sounding. I've actually got uh, a couple of pickup comparisons with the, the stock Duncan Solas and then after I've installed the, the Seymour Duncan Retributions. So this guitar is uh, Ash, Ash Bodied, which um, for seven strings, I don't know, this, people debate whether tone wood actually makes a difference. And um, I am really, really convinced it does at this point. And I'll tell you why. I also own, besides this guitar, a Solar E 1.7, uh, a seven string Explorer with the exact same pickup set in. And um, the only real difference, I guess, is like size, and material. This is an ash guitar and the Solar E 1.7 is mahogany and um, the difference in sound is like massive and when I come to do a video on the Solar E 1.7 I'll do some comparisons for you so you can see but what it boils down to is the E 1.7 because it's mahogany is really dark sounding like there's a, a lot of like low mids and shit like that in there um, and it has to be EQ'd differently when I record with it. Ash, you know, generally I find it's like a brighter sounding wood. There's more high mids in there. And with the girthiness of these pickups, there is so much like nice mid-range note definition with this. You know, I, I, I kind of prefer the sound of this over the E1.7. And, um, you know, like I said, with these pickups, it's, it's such a fucking, I can sit here and chug all day on this thing. The, the tonal qualities that, that come through with these pickups in is just fucking fantastic. Uh, build quality wise, um, as I've said before, I don't think Solar are quite there yet in terms of build quality and QC. They are still a very young company, so I'm sure they will get there eventually. Like I said, this guitar was a B-stock and it came to me as a B-stock with slight traces of use. I don't know what that means exactly. So as far as I was aware, there was like no build quality faults or damage or anything like that. That said, like pretty much all of my Solas, the frets are not perfect. They are nicely rounded. There's no sharpness, but there is paint residue on, you know, most of the frets beyond the 12th fret, there's like red paint residue from, from the guitar. I guess that's overspray or something along those lines. So, you know, it's not perfect. And, you know, you might say I'm being nitpicky, but this guitar retails for like 1100 quid. And, you know, for me, any guitar over a grand should be held up to, you know, a fairly high level of scrutiny, to be honest with you. You know, especially seeing how good some of the, the more affordable stuff is coming out of Indonesia nowadays, like stuff from Court, for example, is like really shit art nowadays. And, and even Harley Benton seem to have, have cleaned their act up a little bit. So, like I said, Solo, uh, uh, they, they have absolutely nailed like feel and playability. Um, the feel of this guitar, the neck profile, the, the quality of the paint on the back of the neck. So like if you run your hand up and down, is like really smooth and really nice. Um, I just don't think they're quite there yet with QC and build quality to really like compete with the big boys on that front. But I'm sure they'll get there. You know, they, they've got off to a great start. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this episode, help me make more of them by chucking me a subscribe. It would be much appreciated. Take care.